Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to Consciously Living, our virtual meeting. Such a wonderful opportunity for us to be together, to pray together, and to learn about the lessons here. And uh, we are gonna have we are gonna have our opening, then a prayer, and then we are gonna invite our dear friend Angela that's going to talk about this wonderful topic that is about spirituality in times of Christ. So all of us are going to definitely benefit from the words of our doctrine to support us in these moments that many of us experience difficulties. So while you're waiting for people to come, we are going to do a reading from the book, Our Daily Bread, and the lesson 39, Invitation to the Good. But when you are invited to go, that's words of Jesus and the look. In all ages, the good is the divinely found capable of providing us with immortal values. Mindful individuals will have noticed that the entire period of childhood consists on a string of appeals to the sublime fountain head. The sacred invitation is repeated year after year. It comes to us by the way of our loving parents, our academic mentors, wholesome reading material, religious sentiments, and ordinary friends. However, few minds reach adolescence with their attention set on the loft calling. Most people listen to the demands of their lower nature and neglected their precious obligation. The appeals persist nonetheless. Here, it might be a friendly book silently revealing the truth. There, it might be a generous friend who insists on pointing out the importance of enlightening realities of life. Rebellious persons, however, even during the full adulthood, usually laugh unconsciously at any such appeals. Nevertheless, whether they like it or not, they are heading for the natural disenchantments that impose more balanced thoughts. In Jesus' gospel, the invitation to the good is clothed in eternal clarity. By heeding it, we can proceed towards an uninterrupted encounter with our Father. If the Christian trumpet has reached your ears, accept these appeals without wavering. Do not wait for the pinprick of necessity. During the storm, it becomes even more difficult to see the port. The majority of our brothers and sisters on earth make their way towards God under the compulsion of pain. Therefore, do not wait for the lashing of the darkness when we calmly follow the clear path of love. What a wonderful invitation and message that the, our daily bread, it is a wonderful, wonderful book. Give us the invitation for us to listen to the call. So we give a good morning to our friends, So Souza. Good morning, Carlos Roberto, Ed Nilsson. So all of us together, I will invite you to do our morning prayer. So let's raise our thoughts to our Father. Our Father that is so full of mercifulness, love to all of us, that he bright our day with his love and embrace us our daily in our daily task. Kai Heavenly Father, be with us here and help us in this morning to listen to the call, to listen to the words, to listen to the lessons of Jesus that help us to embrace the way of Jesus taught us how to live. Help us, us in a way, in these times of difficulties, embrace the lesson of Jesus for us to overcome the difficulties and obstacles. Give each of us the peace of mind, the peace of heart to be present here now so we can listen the words, the lessons that's going to be present for our dear friend Angela. So we can embrace and go enter in our souls, in our hearts, so can translate 
in actions and intentions and good deeds in our life. We ask the good spirits to protect Angela, giving her the calmness and the joy to transmit her study with us. So we thank you, her, for her generous time with us. And so we pray in the name of Jesus. So be it. Amen. So welcome, everyone. So we have Vivi that just arrived. So we invite our dear friend, Angela, that's going to join us in this world. So welcome, Angela. And um, the words is with you, dear friend. Can you hear us, Angela? Hello, friends. Can you hear me? I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, honey. <laughs> Very good. The internet is unstable. I'm so sorry. Let's all pray and send good vibrations that uh, it will be good and you guys will be able at least to listen to my voice and see the slides so super happy to be here it's such a long time that our dear center is closed so i miss the contact of people i miss to be able to go to the center and see your faces but uh, we know we are going throughout a difficult time and it is required to be like this now but soon things will be better we already have the vaccination so let's just uh, be brave be faithful and persevere in this goodness because soon it will be much better so today we are going to talk about this e-spirituality in the time of crisis i will start sharing my slides with you and um and then we are gonna connect this with the this pandemic time that we are going through right now so i consulted many different books to understand a little bit deeper about the many different items that we are gonna see through it so, spirituality in time of crisis. Let me see why it's not. Uh, yes. Oof. <laughs> so, we are going to start talking about atonement and evolution. So, to start talking about it, I have to talk about these three important figures because uh, you, everything started with uh, Moses, then we had uh, Jesus, and finally we had Kardec. This is when we connect with uh, spiritism. Moses showed us the fear. The God that Jesus showed us was a different one. But why, why Moses showed the fear? Because in the past, when we were living in that time, we were different people. We were very hard in spirit, not evolved yet. So to resist anything, we had to be afraid of it. So that's how we started understanding God. Like if I kill someone, God will punish me. So that's how in the beginning we started like being afraid of God. So we avoided doing much worse things because we were afraid of God. But then when the Jesus came, Jesus showed us a very different God. Jesus showed us a God of love. So Jesus showed us this loving mother and father that teaches us and help us to evolve. And then that's imagine the turmoil in that past. Because people were like, no, 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 we have to be afraid of God. And Jesus said, there is nothing to be afraid. God loves us. He is my father. He is your father. So we started like, okay, how? So Jesus was with us, teaching us how to stop being afraid. So if we connect to, with this nowadays, it's like a, a, a mother and father. You know, in my time, when I was a child, my mother only looked at me and I was already like super afraid and I was already not doing something or doing what she asked me. 
Nowadays it's different. Nowadays parents can look, parents can threaten, and the kids are still like, oh. So we as parents have to have even more love to discipline the kids. We are like the kids of God. So we have to be disciplined too. If, uh, if we are not disciplined, we are going to do whatever we want as little kids. And we know that uh, it's not everything that's good. It's not, it's not good for us or for others. So we need to be careful with this. Then came Kardec. And Kardec taught us that this loving God, this mother and father, he was there. And he also had created laws, natural laws, to help us to live well, to help us to evolve. So this is another thing that we couldn't understand. So Kardec had this help from the enlightened spirits who answered thousands of questions that he formulated and he put in the spirits book and in many other books of the codification. So this brought us light for us to be able to understand so much more that we didn't know until the 1800s. And then we have here in this beautiful book, Evolution in Two Worlds. If you haven't read, please do it. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. And in this book, on chapter 20, we get this message from the spirit of Andrea Lewis that Jesus is the governor of the planet Earth. So whenever you hear now someone saying, oh, because Jesus is the governor of the planet Earth, it's not that they heard someone saying, but they read from the psychographic message of Chico Xavier in this book that the spirit of Andrea Luis told us this. So now we start connecting why Jesus has so much responsibility with us. So you probably all know that Jesus is our Christ, but there are many Christs. Every planet has a Christ. And Jesus is the Christ of the planet Earth, of our planet. So that's why he is so connected with us. And now we take his, uh, his uh, sentences. His sentence, for example, he said, there are many different translations, but this one is, trust in God, trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. This is in John. So how do we understand this? In my father's house, there are many rooms. These rooms, you can understand as different solar systems. Our solar system is actually very simple, very small compared to so many other ones. And when you look at the planet Earth, there is nothing really special to the planet Earth. It's small, it's not particularly close to the sun, it's not particularly far away. So it's like an average planet. So why there will be only life on the planet Earth and not in all the other planets or in all the other galaxies? So when we discover in 1990, through science, the telescope Hubble, he just he showed us that uh, there are billions of galaxies. So these were this was something that we we were not aware. We knew there were other galaxies, but we didn't know there were billions. So imagine why would it be life only in the planet Earth? That's not uh, something normal just for us to think. Then the spirits, they explain to us there are many spiritual spheres, not just in the physical one. This is in the spirits book, chapter three. So this is one of the explanations why our uh, space, how do I say, the astronauts, why our astronauts, they were able to go to the moon and they didn't see anything. But what are men looking for? Men are looking for other men, other creatures that walk, 
So they don't have this understanding that there is a possibility to be a spiritual life there that you cannot see with your own eyes. So this is one of the possibilities for us to think. But even science, they say, it's not possible that with these billions of galaxies, there are there is no life somewhere else. What happened is that we don't have capability to arrive in these planets yet, soon, soon. And let's see what's gonna happen when we arrive there. So now we are gonna see the world's phases of evolution. So there are many phases. Our planet Earth was in a long time ago, a primitive planet. So that primitive planets are those planets that the first incarnations of human spirits go to. So they have right now cavemen. They are still evolving. They are still discovering so many things. But the Earth is not there anymore. So Earth was, was, a planet of tests and atonements. So where the spirits, they have to pass by this difficult situation in order to be able to evolve. So from the books, gospel and the spirits book, we got that the earth was in, in tests and atonements where it's necessary to exist pain and suffering. So you can see here in question 55 to 57 and gospel in chapter Three. But the Earth right now, at this moment, we are in regeneration phase. Regeneration phase will be, will be because we are still far from it. We just started this regeneration phase. We got a message from the spirit Bezerra de Menezes through the mediumship of Chico Xavier in 2011 in a very big conference in Brazil, in Brasilia, Brazil, that the Earth had just started this regeneration phase. So imagine when a baby is a few months old, he is not resonating any yet. He cannot walk, he cannot talk. So connect this to a planet. So we will be feeling for a long, long time like we are still in a test and atonement. We will still feel this, but in the future, we will be able to feel like some happiness and a little pain, but no more suffering and atonement. So this will be wonderful. And then we have the other two categories of planets, of worlds more evolved than Earth, that we have the blissful worlds, where the goodness overcomes the evil, and finally the celestial or divine words, where only exists goodness and the pure spirits live there. So this is the, the house of our Jesus. So he lives there and many other Christ and many other spirits. So this is good for us to know we are already in the third phase. Even if we are starting, we are in the third phase. And one day we will, our plan and we'll be able to reach to these other two phases too. So now from this book, The Consoler, I'm not sure if we had this book in English yet, but there are beautiful messages from the spirit of Emmanuel. And Emmanuel explains very well the difference of tests and atonements. So, for example, tests. Tests are the struggles that teach us, teach the rebellious, the lazy disciples, the road of work and the spiritual edification. So there are many different types of tests. There is the test of poverty, of beauty, of power. So there are so many different tests. Imagine a person was a, a, a politician and he was corrupt and he did lots of bad things. So when he discarnated, he went to the spiritual realm and he learned that what he did was wrong and he had to improve, and he had to act in a different way, and then he will come back again to Earth to put this understanding, all this learning to proof that he improved to see if he's gonna pass his test. This is the exactly same thing here on Earth on a school. A kid played the whole year, didn't really study, 
but he was okay with many subjects. But then math, the teacher did not allow him to progress because he didn't reach the, gate, the grades, even the minimal. So she tells him, I'm sorry, you will have to study all over again to do the test again to see if you're going to be able to continue your education. This is the test. And what is the atonement? The atonement is the penalty imposed on the wrongdoer who commits a crime. So it's a penalty. You did something wrong. You have to be, uh, you have to pay for what you did. And then imagine you will have to be living a similar pain so we can learn and we can repair this error. So let me give you an example. A person that, uh, a man who lived and uh, in his past life, he enjoyed killing cats. He never really thought about cats as a loving animal. He just killed the cats and that's it. So his conscience didn't connect with the animals. But when he went to the spiritual realm, he understood what he was doing was wrong and he had to come back to earth. But there are two possibilities. As we know in spiritism, there are thousands of possibilities. So we can never say, oh, he did this. So the consequence will be that. We know that. So please do not think that the one example that I'm giving is that everything, everyone who does this will happen because it's not like that. But there are possibility of this spirit who did not learn, who did not repent, who did not feel sorry for what he did. So he comes back and he will have to go through all that pain to finally understand what he did was wrong. So this is the case that, uh, let's suppose, hundreds of people are swimming on, on the beach, in the, in the beach, and suddenly he is the one who a shark comes and bites. Not necessarily kills him, but he's the one who has the mark of an animal. But there is also the possibility of a, another man who did the same crime of killing cats. And then he recognized that what he did was wrong. And he returned to the incarnation. And it was in his project of life to be beaten by a shark, for example. But this man, he understood so well what he did was wrong that when he returned, he started taking care of, of cats. He opened a shelter for cats. He paid from his own money to help animals that were abandoned. So this man was a progressive man. He worked hard in order to pay his debt. So the enlightened spirits that told us he will be able to have a moratory, a moratory. So he will not need to die by a, a animal anymore because he already did this his own cleansing. So this is with everyone. This is just for you to understand one or two possibilities of thousands to you connect what is atonement. And then we come to types of atonements. So this book, I don't think this is the translation of the book into English, but I'm sure Biga knows. I was in doubt of uh, two different titles. So I just wrote the problem of uh, being destiny and pain by Leon Denis. That is the, the title translated into English. But I think the, the book is published under a different title. But then Leon Denis explains to us their individual uh, tests and atonements and group tests and atonements. So individual, a child is born blind or with some incurable disease or is an orphan. There are so many different possibilities. This is the individual atonement because of something connected to his or her past. She will have to be born like that. And then there is the group atonement. So basically what we are living right now with this pandemic, we are going through uh, an atonement, a group atonement. 
something that made all of us in the whole planet to have a wake up call, something that is hurting everywhere. So we had to stop our normal day to day life and, uh, and change. So this is also an improvement for us because we had to stop to figure out what is happening. How can I help others? How can I help myself? This is something. But Leon Denis tells us that the groups at group autonomous could be an earthquake, airplane crash, a building on fire. So this is a way that the whole group will redeem and they will evolve faster. So one example that uh, I have about a, a group atonement. It was a personal story that happened to me when I was 10 years old. My ge ge geography teacher, she had a plastic hand. She always used long sleeves, so we didn't really pay much attention. But I remember one of my colleagues saying one of her hands is fake. She never really moved her arm, so we didn't realize. But that stayed in my head. Many, many, many years later passed, and one time, the same colleague tells me, do you remember the, geogra the geography teacher who had the plastic hand? And I said, yes, yes, I remember. And he said, I just heard a very sad story. When she was five years old, her family took her to a circus in uh, Niterói, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And this circus got on fire. So the smoke spread so quickly that the most of the people perished uh, on this fire. But uh, she only escaped because she was very small and someone was able to pull her from underneath the tent and uh, she escaped, but uh, her family, they died. So this was like very shocking for me i was like oh my god poor thing imagine how difficult for this child she lost her mother and father and other family members and she even had the mark of her arm but it's a blessing that she was able to survive so more years pass more time pass and one day i'm listening to one of the thousand talks of divaldo franco when he mentions that the Chico Xavier told him a story of a group atonement. And the story is there was a group of people who in the time of Jesus, they enjoyed the time of the first Christians, they enjoyed going to the Roman circles to see the first Christians being burned alive. And this group of people, they had not had the strength to evolve individually. So this group, they remain with the same ideas and was taking a long time for them to progress. So the enlightened spirit said that we had to be stronger with them. And this is the group of people that were in the circles in Niterói, Rio. And, the, and Divaldo mentions that uh, Chico told him this group of people from the circles in Niterói, they perished in a similar way from the ones they used to see and enjoy. So this is a type of a group atonement. So they were able to go in through this difficult pain. They evolved faster because all of them got liberated from this issue that is still remained stuck in them, not allowing them to progress as fast. And then we have the physical and the spiritual points of view with group atonement. So the, the, the spiritual point of view, that's the one I, I just mentioned. You know, they can, oh, the problem of life. The, oh, thank you so much for the title of the, of the book. So it's, it's wonderful to understand the point of view of the spirits, because for us, we think 
oh, it's such a tragedy. It's a horrible uh, airplane that crashed and killed the hundreds of people. And uh, many times we say, oh, this was a fault of this, a fault of that. But uh, in, by the spiritual point of view, we understand it was necessary. It was actually a way to help them to evolve faster. But through our point, it's always, it's always painful. It's always difficult for us to understand it. And then we, it's very important for us to understand the difference between pain and suffering. Most of us don't understand, especially when we talk, we always say, oh, he's suffering so much. Oh, I'm suffering. So let's see what is pain and what is suffering. So pain, pain is the mechanism of preservation of life. And it's not negative at all. It's actually really good. Imagine you put your finger on a surface that's hot and your body will tell you, oh, you feel the pain and you remove your finger immediately. So it helps you, avoid you to burn your, your hand. But you have to understand also there is a specific disease that the people are born with and they do not feel pain at all. So you think, oh, this is wonderful. No, this is super dangerous because this person can be put the whole hand there. The hand is melting down but the person do not feel it. So imagine the danger. But what is suffering? <laughs> I love the drawing. Look at the face of the suffering person. Ah! <laughs> so the suffering is this pathological state of why me? I'm sure you know people. I'm sure probably you were one of these persons that uh, sometimes we end up in our negative moods. That's normal, you know. We can't stay there forever. But sometimes we have that day, we wake up and like, oh, everything happens to me. Poor me. I suffer so much. I'm the only person who lost the job. I'm the only person who this and this and this. So this, it's not good. So we should not go through suffering. We should go through pain. Pain is normal. It's a wake up call. It's our body telling you. When you have a headache, go to check what it is. If it's happening constantly, be careful. There is your body telling you something. When you have fever, that's your body telling you something that something is not good. But the state of why me is something negative. You, you shouldn't be there. So when you connect that you are being why me, stop. Do a prayer and ask the good spirits to help you to get out of this state and to move on. Another, another quick example. My sister just lost her job because the clinic that she worked is, told her that it's closing. And she panicked. She was in the why me state. Oh, no, now I lost my job because I don't have a place to, to work anymore. It closed and all the other places are super expensive. They are far away, blah, 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 blah. And then I told her, not necessary. Sometimes pain comes to us as a wake-up call to tell us, do something different, work. So when you are in the why me state, don't stay home like, ah, no. Go to work, search, act, be active. And then she did. And the, finally, she got another clinic in a better location with the rent cheaper. And she's super happy with the results. So she was even mentioning if the clinic wasn't going to close, I would be stay calm there, not searching for other places. But because of uh, the pain, she was able to act faster and that's it. Now she got a better place. But what are the consequences of pain and what are the consequences of uh, suffering? So the consequences of pain, they help us to reflect on our problems, be closer to God and be compassionate to the other's suffering. This is what's happening in COVID time. We are going through this. You, you probably heard a lot of people who were never even religious, never even connect to any type of spirituality. And suddenly 
they write to you or they call you or they tell people, oh, I don't even believe in God, but if you can, could you pray for this person or for that person? Because uh, just something extra uh, special could help. So this is something that uh, actually impulses us towards something good. But uh, what is the suffering? The difference is that the, the suffering brings us to revolt, hatred, and self-pity. So not the really good consequences. So this is for us to understand what is the difference between pain and suffering. And then we go now to can we change our atonement? I believe you will know the answer because I actually gave you an example in the beginning of a two men that uh, really enjoyed killing cats in the past and one was able to improve and the other not. So in the book of heaven and hell, we have this. It's saying after accomplishing three phases, so we only can change our atonements if we reach to these three phases. The first one is the re repentance. So is when our conscience awakes and we think, ah, oh, this was horrible. I shouldn't have done that. So that's when you wake up. Then there is the atonement. You still have to go through pain. You still have to understand what you did and feel the same. And then there is the reparation. Reparation is paid back with love. So this is something important. So when you do these three phases according to the book of heaven and hell, we are able to change our atonement, change our future atonement. Now it's another beautiful book, also from, from Divaldo. And the Joana de Angelis Spirit tells us. So the name of the book is Self-Discovery, an Inner Search. And Joana teaches us to repeat an experience many times until it is right. It's almost like my mother when she used to ask me to clean the stove, for example. And I cleaned. And then she went there and she looked, she said, Angela, this is not a good cleaning. You have to come back and clean again. And I'm like, oh, mom, I already cleaned. This is Angela, teenager. And then my mom told me, if you don't do well, you will do twice. And the Joanna teaches us the same thing. If you don't do something well, you will have to do it many times until you finally learn it. So she explains that we need to go to these phases of constructing. So we'll be evolving with love, three, the three different phases, okay? So there are people that they are constructing. There are people they are destroying. So they act in a negative way. So the, instead of living their life in a good way, constructing something better, they actually are rebellious. So they are destroying it. And there is also the majority of people they are reconstructing. That's the majority of the population. So we made lots of errors. We finally have the awaken, and then we go through the atonement, and finally we go to the reparation, when we are able to repair our past mistakes. So that's how we can clean our atonements. And uh, and then our mistakes will be cleared. So now we are in this uh, reparation. So we have to understand that uh, no act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. So everything good we do, it's sin. Everything good. So you say good morning to someone that never talks to you. This is already something positive. Let's do it. And then we, we have the spirits of uh, St. Paul that he says, love covers a multitude of errors. Isn't that beautiful? People say, oh, for me, there is no forgiveness because things I did are unforgivable. 
Yes, maybe what you did was really serious, was really terrible. But if you are already in the process we just mentioned of repentance, then uh, yes, God loves all of us, all of us. And we will all evolve. Some will evolve faster, others more or less, and others will take a little bit more time. But we will all reach to perfection one day. And then... In the spiritual realm, as we were mentioning before, when we are going to reincarnate, we have help of the enlightened spirits. You can see this in the, in the book Nosso Lar of André Luiz, where there are chambers specialized for reincarnation process. So you go there to see how your body will look like, who will be your family, what are the, the difficulties you will need to go through. So it's beautiful. So there you will recognize your errors. You will learn exactly what you need to improve. So you have to study. And our spiritual guides will help us with this reincarnation process. We will be a new life and a new chance to come back again and do good. And this, this circle of life will continue. You know, we are born, child, we get... The, a young person, then we die and we come back again. And every time we improve, every time we get better. So in Spiritism, we understand that we, we are always evolving. Even the worst criminals ever, they will be evolving in something. Uh, the spirit of Emmanuel, he mentions they are the ones who are the lazy spirits. The ones who don't want to evolve even a tiny little bit. So they just stay in the stage of like, okay, didn't do, didn't do good or didn't do any bad. So we stay stationary. But nobody regress. We are always going to a better state. And one day, if we don't go by our own uh, desires, we will be forced to evolve. Now we go again to the individual and group evolution. How can we evolve? So we have the planet Earth. And the planet Earth, you know, is basically a spirit center. It's a huge <laughs> spirit center. And what is the spirit center? The spirit center is these four items, you know, is our school our home, our hospital, and a temple. So in the spirit center, you have all those items. So this is why it's such a blessing when, uh, when we have one close to us that we can go there, we can educate ourselves, we can have like, a, like a, our friends that they become our family. We have people that we, we met and we say, wow, it's like I know you for my whole life. And it's also a hospital. When you feel sick, you go to the spirit center in order to ask for help. So there are spirit centers that have the, the counseling that you can talk to someone. Someone can help you when you are uh, stressed. And, uh, you know, the temple where you can pray, where you can find this God and help you, your inner evolution. So when we go through, temptations you know we have the strength of the spirit center to help us to make it tough decisions are you going to the easy way that we can say the wide door or you're going to the narrow way and then a lot of people say oh the narrow way is too difficult it's too much pain no more suffering too much pain and uh, but then you wake up and you say, you know, the easy way is dangerous and it can cost too expensive to my soul. And then you you decide to go into the correct one. And uh, so, as we mentioned before, God is this loving mother and father that will teach us how to avoid these wide uh, ways these dangerous ways and uh, we have to evolve my my dog here we have to evolve through our own free will we need to use our free will in, our, in order to evolve 
So we need to take our own decisions. We can't be waiting for someone else to decide. No, we are the ones who have to say, I will do it, even if it's painful, but I need it. And then we come to this planetary migration. So yes, planetary migration, there are spirits coming and going, coming and going. And uh, in the book of Genesis, we talk about it. They talk, the enlightened spirits talk about the on chapter 11. So migration of spirits from one world to another. So within the universe, there are inhabited worlds with beings at different degrees of evolution. So we have heard many times Divaldo Franco telling us, but also Chico Xavier a long time ago, the medium, the famous medium from Brazil, he mentioned there are enlightened spirits coming to earth in order to help earth to progress. And then we have here, evolved spirits are arriving to help us to progress. And the lower vibration spirits are forced to leave. That's why a lot of people are talking now in the time of COVID, lots of people are leaving the planet Earth because they did not evolve. Please do not think every single person dying of COVID, they are going to, to uh, worlds that are not, that are inferior than Earth because that's not what do we want to say? Some people, they are going because they did not evolve. They did not make the effort to become a better person. So uh, the earth has to evolve and the spirits inhabiting here, they have to evolve through their free will. So evolve the planet, evolve the spirits. And this other beautiful book, Indigo and Crystal Children, written by Givaldo and Vanessa Celoni, we have this message of, uh, no, it, I'm sorry, in the book, you all knew it got very, very famous for a certain period of time. Everybody talking about the indigo children and the crystal children. So the indigo children, a very quick way, are these very, very intelligent spirits that are coming in thousands and millions to earth but they are not necessarily morally evolved. But the crystal spirits, they are intellectually and morally evolved. So these ones are coming to boost the earth. And the indigo ones that are extremely intelligent, they need the guidance of their parents to develop their morality. It's very important to parents, don't be mesmerized with their intelligence. It's wonderful, but they need the guidance to improve their morality because there are many things they still lack and they need this help. And now the spirit of Emmanuel told the Shiku that the highly evolved spirits are reincarnating to speed our progress. I already mentioned that, but very dark spirits are also reincarnated in order to clean up the lower zones, the umbrow of Earth. Basically, it's like for Earth to fully regenerate, go to the regeneration phase, the basement, the umbrow has to be cleared of those spirits who sometimes are there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Not reincarnating choosing not to reincarnate or reincarnating and repeating the same mistakes and hardly evolving so they are coming right now in large number because they will be forced to have their last experience so it's now or never or you repent or you start improving or you will die and you will reincarnate in a lower level planet. And finally, our dear Joana de Angelis, she told us, she told uh, Divaldo Franco that uh, this was the message actually from, from Chico Xavier. So Chico Xavier told us Emmanuel reincarnated in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 2000. So we know Emmanuel right now is 21 years old. And he was born in Sao Paulo, and he will be working with 
education. So one day we will hear of a famous young educator and, uh, you know, it might be Emmanuel. Joana told uh, Divaldo that around 2020, she was going to reincarnate. We don't know yet if she did, probably not yet, because our wonderful Divaldo is here with us, and I'm so happy. I love him. <laughs> but uh, Joana will soon be coming back. And then we also know Dr. Bezerra de Menezes will come back. And uh, Francis of Assisi with around 200 followers. And that they will reincarnate in Europe to also boost uh, this loving energy in Europe. And to finalize, I just uh, wanted to mention this beautiful music, Imagine, from John Lennon. Unfortunately, I cannot put the music because uh, YouTube, Facebook, it's, they are very tough with copyrights. But uh, just read and pay attention on these two sentences. Imagine all the people living life in peace. This will be wonderful. And one day it will happen. One day we will all understand each other, be more loving, be more respectful. And the, and the wars in little scale or large scale will not happen. Little scale, we can even mention about our personal wars, family wars, neighbors hating each other this will end and in a bigger scale are yes are the countries they will be more understanding to each other and in the end he also says no need for greed so beautiful uh, beautiful music and uh, with these words i want to thank you so much for listening to the lecture have a wonderful day Thank you very much, dear friend. It was a wonderful explanation and a lot of understanding. So it's very important for us to understand and accept God's wills and put things in perspective. Would you like to invite you to do our final prayer? Would you please? Yes, sure. Thank, Thank you, you. Big. So my friends, at this moment, let, uh, let's just close our eyes and let's connect with the evolved spirits. Let's ask uh, our Master Jesus to come close to us, our guardian angels. And uh, let's say thank you. Thank you so much for everything we have, starting with our physical body, with our home, family, with our work. Even if we don't have a job right now, we will have soon. And we are going through this difficult moment to improve. And for this, we ask your help, your guidance. And we ask strength for our perseverance to never quit, understanding there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Remembering the words of Chico Xavier when he says that everything passes. The good things, they come and go. And the bad things, they come and go but the experiences, they stay. So at this moment, we would like to feel these good vibrations penetrating our being, giving us this strength, this happiness, and we will be able to spread this to our friends, our family, connect with this love, and ask all the enlightened spirits to send a little bit of this positiveness throughout the world, through where there is so much pain, to the hospitals, nursing homes, to places that are in hunger, to places that are going through so much pain because of COVID. Please help all of us. We are God, your children, still in need of our guidance. And we know that we are doing our best. We are here on earth trying to demonstrate what we had learned. And we are constantly learning. And that's why we are here at this moment in conscious living, listening to this talk, improving ourselves. Thank you so much for your help always. And you stay with us. So be it. Thank you, my friend. It has some comments here. Say, Souza, say thank you, Angela. 
and also Adnilson just want to share our token of appreciation for the information and all this study it was a wonderful study. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, my dear. Thank you all. Okay. So my friends, we say goodbye here, wishing everybody a wonderful day. Just a little reminder that we have the gospel studying every morning, Sunday morning, 9.30 with our friend David and John. So it's a wonderful way to study and get the consolation, understand the consolation of the gospel in our life. I wish everybody a good week and I see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.